Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth dungeon in my Final Fantasy uh, dungeon series from a multi-box perspective. Today we are doing Hawk Manor. I think that's how you pronounce it. I actually have absolutely no idea how this dungeon is pronounced. Um, but let's get into it. So I did speed this up. This is another sped up one. This dungeon isn't very hard except for uh, the last boss and a couple trash pulls. So here you see this is actually one of the harder trash mobs. You see it does that AoE ability. Essentially, if you are in that, it stuns your team. If your team gets stunned, you're probably going to lose a character or two. Otherwise, there's not really too many menacing things going on in this trash. Uh, this place reminds me a lot of Waycrest Manor in World of Warcraft BFA, but of course this way predates Waycrest Manor. But that being said, I really like Waycrest Manor, so this is a bit of a fun dungeon. Um... Like I said, there's not too much difficult trash going on here. You kind of go around these little corridors collecting keys. You can see here, I just had one of these witches spawn, and it's it's pretty it's pretty threatening. I, I don't have any cases here where there was anything too bad, but you can see there, I did get kind of caught off guard by it just showing up in the in the middle there. So you run around, you you get these keys. Those keys unlock doors. And then you get bigger keys, so you get tiny keys to unlock the regular doors, and then you get big keys to unlock to the actual bosses. Uh, my team comp for this is I'm running a gladiator tank, I'm running two summoners, and I'm running a scholar. So previously I was running three arcanists. Arcanists turn into scholars and summoners, and so now I'm actually running what would be like a traditional you know, quote unquote trinity comp. You can see I'm circling back here because I realized I needed to pick up a key. Ideally I wouldn't have done that. I really like, there's a lot of trash in this dungeon that can be skipped and in order for this dungeon run to be kind of quick what you really ought to do is try to minimize the amount of trash you have to pull so if you go into every single side quest room or side area you will get a lot more keys than you need but you're also going to kill a lot of things that you don't need to kill. So, I got the key from the first room. Uh, like I said, there's there's many throughout, so you, you don't have to necessarily get it from that specific room. That's just the room that I got it from. And that becomes more true, uh, especially when we get to the basement. So you can see I just got another tiny key. I could use it to unlock that door if I wanted to. I don't want to. Now, here's an interesting trash pack. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> these are pretty simple mushrooms but this this trash area right here is, is actually a little complicated uh, what tends to happen is you can kind of chain pool uh, a lot and get so see you here I've got two sisters I backpedal out of that which I'm not a huge fan of doing um, and I've just got a huge pack going luckily my team can handle this pretty well the the sisters aren't very threatening um, as long as you can avoid their AoE attack if you get stunned in the AoE, like, you're probably going to wipe. Especially in that scenario, if any of my characters had gotten hit by that, that probably would have spelled a wipe for me. But I was able to get everyone out, and that was pretty straightforward. So yeah, you can see here, just cleaning this up uh, on our way to the first boss. Um, there's one more sister that needs to be killed here. So she explodes, does that AoE, no one gets hit. The single target burst on this team is, is absolutely ridiculous. And so this boss is uh, a sister, or whatever they're called. Chamber girls, I don't, I don't know. Um, she is pretty straightforward, nothing too difficult here. It looks like she does a cleave ability. Uh, but she does a little AoE ability that you're going to see that I'm going to have to move out of. So there it is. Uh, I move out of that one kind of late, but it's still okay, I don't get hit. She has a fairly decent amount of health points, so she goes down a little slowly, as you can see. But there's really nothing too challenging about her, overall, I would say. She casts that again, so I'm just going to move. I'm going to strafe them out of the way. Renew my dots, so I actually waste some DPS here, uh, not recasting dots. She does an AoE ability, that so that's the trash ability that stuns characters. You gotta get out for that, which is pretty straightforward. Again, just moving your group out of that, it's, it's pretty easy if you just have a broadcast strafe key. 
I, I definitely tried to make sure I refreshed my dots a little bit quicker here. As you can see, this, this plays out a little bit better. I, I definitely... No, it doesn't. <laughs> I didn't do a great job of managing my dots here. Ideally, what you would want to do is, prior to the ability going off that's coming, you would want to refresh dots. That way you don't lose any DPS. So I definitely lost some DPS here. Not the smoothest DPS, but I also think she might have a decent amount of health. But she's pretty, she's pretty non-threatening overall, I would say. So now we have to go into the basement. And again, there's really, there's really nothing super challenging here. If anything, the trash gets simpler. What I will say is that the trash does get, there's more of it down here that's skippable. So your first run through, if you're going through and clearing out absolutely everything, it's going to take a lot longer than on subsequent clears when you know exactly where you can go. And if memory serves me correctly, because I recorded this video like two weeks ago, I believe that I, I do a pretty good job of skipping everything that can be skipped here. And I don't really kill too many things that don't need to be killed. One thing that did annoy me about this section is that you have these, you have this really, it's just really long. There's a lot of time that goes between the first boss and the second boss. And then the second boss and third boss are like pretty close together. You still have the sisters here, but so the door is actually right there that we need to go into. We need to unlock. It's like right at the bottom of the stairs. We have to go all the way around this room. Uh, essentially to unlock and get the key that we need and then because there's a wall that prevents you from just immediately going there you actually have to walk all the way back around which kind of stinks it would have been nice if there was a way to like unlock with a key a shortcut and maybe there is but i totally missed it if there was Yeah, I go in this room, I pick up this little key. I don't think I actually need this, but there's no trash in here, so I don't really care. Pick up this other key, because why not? Keys are good. You never know when you're going to need more. Here's another... Uh, nah, that wasn't too bad of a challenging pull. I made sure to wait till the sister was far enough away that I wasn't going to get her as part of this group. I'm just spreading dots and blowing them up one by one, trying to tab target as much as I can. Um, my summoners at this point have an ability that spreads dots, so I'll cast my dots on one on one mob and then I'll just push the the spread dot ability. Then it's on everything, and then I try not to I try to to leave the mobs with some a little bit of health. Okay, here you can see I got my tank got stunned here, and I'm in a little bit of a rough spot. So this is this is actually good that I got a little bit of footage of that. You can see my healers dipped pretty far low. My healers having a hard time staying alive. Uh, ultimately, will stay alive, and I'll I'll kill it without too much problem. But it it can definitely get hairy pretty quickly if you get stunned there. And that was just my tank. So if if my healer had gotten stunned as well it probably would have been GG for sure. So here we are. I think the key that I need is in this room. So I'm fighting in here. I truthfully don't remember if it's in here or not. You can see I'm doing my tab targeting. And that last mob usually just takes a little bit. So here we go. I think I got the key I need. Now I have to go all the way back around. It just feels like a chore. It sucks. So we're at this door. We're going to use the key. And at this point, we're met with these two gargoyles. I guess it's really like a gargoyle looking fire guy and a guy with a sword and shield. These guys, I like, I never had any sort of challenge with these guys. 
I never really had any sort of challenge with the first boss either. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, the one the one guy does some sort of AoE here that I run out for, and then I just run back in. I keep my dots on both of them. There's it's not like they enrage when the other one dies. It's I don't know. Like it's always good to have dots rolling on both if you can, and do some cleave. I think I probably kill them both at the same time just to alleviate any concerns of it, like an enrage type ability, but I don't think you actually have to. Uh, they really, <laughs> this is like super, super simple and basic. Like I don't think they do particularly like a lot of damage to the tank or anything like that either. It's, it's pretty straightforward. So here I'll have this warrior dead pretty quickly. And I'm just going to swap back to the bat or dragon or whatever the heck this thing is. And that's going to go down. Now to just take the warrior down. He goes down without too much issue. And this is when the dun so they drop this little script that you have to use. This script basically allows you to get up to the last boss. The last boss is actually in the main room that you're in when you enter the dungeon. So you enter the dungeon, you go up the stairs. You can't go up the stairs. It's blocked. It's, you need the script from this guy and the, these guys in the basement. You can't get to the basement without killing that sister in the first room and then you can't get into this room to get the script until you go all the way around the circle. Um, so it's kind of, it's like a little bit of a circle back rather than going immediately to the boss, but it's an all right dungeon. I like the way it's designed. It's not, it's not super challenging. Um, this last boss definitely is to some degree. It could be, it is definitely a little bit more challenging with my comp rather than in, in general, but I, I did like two shot this, so it, it's not like I needed to roll a ton of attempts. But let's go ahead and just kind of break it down. So this last boss has a few different things that you have to watch out for. So the first thing is that in the four corners of the room, there will be this little these little lampshades that will do AOE damage. Now you can click on them to remove the AOE. But I don't do that, I just ignore them. And then at like 25 to 30% health, what she does is she just goes invulnerable and spawns like uh, a few different adds that uh, are pretty dangerous when put together. So the real challenge of this fight doesn't really begin until you get to like 20%. And then at 20% all hell kind of breaks loose. You can't burn the boss because the boss goes invulnerable. So you really just have to execute it, and with a with a with a team like this, it can be kind of challenging because the damage kind of takes a little bit of time to ramp up. It's not front loaded. There's really no cleave other than like dots, which aren't really even that strong to cleave. Um, so this really isn't the ideal comp for this dungeon, but I was able to pull it off after uh, a couple of, of attempts. So. We'll just go ahead and run in. You can see the video is going to skip a little bit because I will have died. Um, and I'm just going to spread out. So I found spreading out to be a little bit easier, but I don't think it actually matters. The game's going to auto turn my characters anyways. So you can see the fight begins. She actually loses health pretty quickly. She doesn't have very much health. I would actually say she has even less health than the first boss. And it's probably because this last phase is supposed to be hard. And really, I think this is kind of one of those cases where they had a ch they had a, like a really well balanced dungeon, and every like over time, because they had to scale everything down, just the way the fight works has just become more kludgy. So you can see in the corners of the room, there's these orbs you can click on. Uh, they do like purple damage to the group that I pretty much ignore. At this point, this little fire guy comes out because she's at about 30 to 40% health. I'm going to switch to it and kill it 
And then there's going to be a couple more mobs that spawn like right after this. So here we go. So we've got two sister ladies that are up. We've got this little guardian that comes up. And we need to make sure that the group doesn't die. So I preemptively start an AoE heal from the healer um, that kind of takes care of the AoE splash damage that everyone is taking. Getting everything clumped up on the tank is super crucial right now. And keeping the tank alive is also super crucial. On top of that, it's really just a matter of switching to the adds and blowing them up, knowing that there are, some are higher priority than others. Now, I couldn't actually tell you what the priority is. That fire elemental, as you can see, kind of blows himself up eventually anyways. But this fight really is just more about control than anything else. If you can stay in control of the fight, then it's really not too difficult. Um, once, you're, once you've killed all these things, the fight's not over. You do have to swap back to the boss. The boss's immune shield doesn't drop for a little bit, which is super strange. I, I notice this pretty much every time. I don't know why it does that. Uh, you can see my group is still kind of struggling on health, but um, all the hard parts of the fight are technically over at this point. So I'm not really too concerned at all. She does this AoE. Just get out of it. And at this point... My group is beaten, battered, but it is GG. So this has been Hawk Manor. Not too terribly exciting until the last boss. The last boss can be a little bit of a challenge, but if you're prepared for it or have the right comp, then it won't be too, too difficult. Thanks.